like, well, we're kind of like one, like a, like just kind of like, okay, so like, okay, so like, okay, so this is, this is fascism right here, right? And let's like, we're, this is like low, this is very low, but, but we're like, we're, we like, we're like, kind, we're like, right, we're skimming it. We're skim, but we're not in it. And we're definitely not below, but we're like skimming the top of it a little. And so you should vote for us. All right. Hello. How are you guys? Uh, welcome to another Road Reflections. I'm your host, Chris Mohan. This is uh, this is gonna be a little. This is gonna be a shorty. Uh, I, I guess is what we're what what I'm. I keep referring to it in my own head is 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 a, is a, is a shorty. I don't know why. Um, but uh, but that's what the, you know because these are a little bit shorter. They're not they're not the long live stream type shit that I normally used to do when now things have shifted on this channel so there's going to be a bunch of different types of content uh coming out on this channel so um uh yeah stay tuned and uh some of this content is only going to be uh, available on either rockfin or odyssey so if you are watching this on uh, on the old youtubes uh, then i highly encourage you to go join my rockfin or my odyssey channel uh, rockfin.com slash Krishmohan haha and uh, on Odyssey at Krishmohan haha. Uh, but uh, I do want to encourage you guys to hit the like button, hit the share, and please make sure that you are subscribed to this wherever you are watching or listening to this. Um, please make sure that you're subscribed to it. All that sort of stuff helps with the with the visibility of a, of a pretty censored channel and a pretty censored show. This 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 show is 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 uh, is rather censored, uh, which means the only way we kind of get around some of that algorithmic censorship is uh, is by you guys. If you if you watched it and you like this, uh, hit that like, hit that share, get the word out, tell some folks about it. Um, so yeah. And so with all that said and done, let's dive into today's topic, shall we? Um, I want to talk about India Walton's defeat. I, I mentioned uh, uh, a few months ago when she won the primary, uh, and we'll do a little bit of a recap, uh, that I was genuinely excited to see someone like India Walton um, defeat a Democratic establishment candidate. Right, Byron Brown. That's the mayor of Buffalo. That's where she was running. She was running for mayor in the city of Buffalo. And so, who is India Walton? India Walton is an open socialist. She beat Byron Brown in the in the primaries, uh, and uh, and doesn't have a Republican uh, opponent, which which effectively meant that once she won the primary, then uh, she basically won the general election, and it was looking very much like. Uh, she was going to be the first socialist mayor of the city of Buffalo. And, and not only is she, is, is, is she socialist, uh, which is a, well, a little bit of a mouthful to say there, uh, but not only is she a socialist, but she is a black woman. She is a working class black woman. She, she was a nurse. She was a union member. Um, you know, and, and, and to me, I think the way that she spoke was, was, not exactly like, but uh, probably invoked because of her ethnicity, because of her racial background, uh, and because of her political ideologies, probably invoked some Black Panther imagery in in people's minds. Um, uh, you know, a, a little bit for me. I, I saw some of her policies. Uh, they're they're very much in line with uh, with something like a DSA, right? Um, something like what AOC claims to stand for. And uh, and so I was excited about it. I thought this was very cool, right? And that Black Panther imagery is it, it, it tends to be scary uh, to let's call them whores of the oligarchy, uh, aka Democrats and Republicans. Uh, 
to 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 mainstream corporate Democrats. I mean, a, a, a socialist coming in and saying that she wants to defund the police and reallocate those funds to social services uh, and mental health and med- educational services is terrifying because the cops are necessary because the cops are the ones that protect the oligarch stuff. That's where policing, policing comes from that policing comes from slave patrols when black people were considered property. Uh, so, so since the, uh, inception of, of policing in America, it's always been about controlling, uh, controlling people. And, and, you know, it's, it's, it's very much linked and tied to slavery as well. Uh, if if you're if you're wanting more details on that, there is a a video uh, about defund the police that talks about the history of policing within it. That's available on this channel, or you can leave a comment, and I will um, I will reply with the with the link to uh, the video there. So uh, you know, uh, one, one way or the other, you can get this information. It's very easily accessible. So uh, Walton wins effectively becoming the mayor of Buffalo, right? First, first uh, socialist mayor of Buffalo. Very exciting stuff. Uh, but uh, Byron Brown decides to launch a write-in campaign. He 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 starts uh, you know circulating the thing that he wants to have a write-in campaign because he doesn't think it's fair that he lost. Uh, who does that fucking sound like? Uh, Right. And, and we'll get we'll get into the details of this right and bullshit. But but the core thing that w- that we all need to know about this kind of the basics of it is that he was getting funded not only by the Democratic establishment, but also the Republican establishment. So this corporate mainstream Democrat, Byron Brown, who's who's another black man. Right. Because and, and the DNC loves kind of using the, the identity politics to be like, see, even minorities can line up with the horrific, parasitic and abusive capitalist principles. Yay. Diversity, diversity and torture. Right. Which is like, that's not the diversity we should be fucking celebrating. Uh, but this Democrat, this corporate Democrat is not only getting money from other corporate Democrats, but now is also getting money from Republicans. So once again, you can't really make an argument when you see stories like this that there are two actual very different parties in America. They're not. They're basically the same party. Uh, th- there, there are some very subtle minor differences, right? Like, like Democrats are kind of nice to gay people while they take their working rights away from them. You, you know what I mean? It's like stuff like that. Like they'll, they'll say that they stand for gay marriage you know, w- without actually having to do anything for gay marriage until the popular consensus changes rather than do what's do the right thing. Right. It's, it's a it's an it's a, a critique I've had of, of the Democrats for quite some time. Uh, they're still a corporate party. They're still a war party. Uh, and and the only difference is sometimes they're nicer than the Republicans. But in this instance, they're going to work together in order to stop India Walton from becoming the mayor of Buffalo, which they effectively did uh, earlier in November. Right. Uh, so so what happened? That's the big question that we need to that that uh, that I want to kind of dissect and talk about here. So what happened? Um, well, here are the establishment attacks, right? Because a lot of this stuff winds up being being propaganda based. Um, the first thing they did was basically compare her to Trump in saying that that uh, voting for India Walton and if India Walton wins, it will be the municipal equivalent of electing Donald Trump, which is bullshit, right? Which is bullshit. Uh, Ron Placone and I have talked about how there isn't really a right wing populist like the, the phrase right wing populist exists and uh, they they know how to kind of speak in populist terms uh, and with populist vigor, right? But they're actually not populist. What they are uh, are authoritarian. That's that's what um, anybody that claims to be a right wing populist always ends up becoming. They become authoritarian. And uh, Trump was no different. Trump was a right wing pop, but he was no socialist, not even fucking close. And if you think Trump was a socialist or if you think Trump even leaned minutely towards socialism, you have a, a an incredible misunderstanding of socialism, like a wild like you're not even close, like like socialism is in Pittsburgh, where I'm located. 
And somewhere in Alpha Centauri is where your fucking definition of socialism is. That's how far apart. That's how wrong you are if you think even for a minute second that Trump was a fucking socialist. That dude did not believe in universal health care, universal pre-K, universal basic income. He did not want to defund the police, right? Uh, and he definitely doesn't give a shit about immigrants. Economically speaking, this dude is a capitalist through and through. And if you're a capitalist, you really – if you really believe that profit is is far more important than taking care of people, then there is no fucking way, no fucking way you can say that you're a socialist. If everything boils down to to, to money and profit for you and making more – then you can't even remotely call yourself a socialist because fundamentally you're the opposite of that, Right? But this is this to me, the fact that they went after a black working class woman socialist and compared her to Trump because she was socialist, just this is proof to me that the only defense uh, and the only real quality that the Democratic Party has is Trump derangement syndrome. Like the only thing that they have in their arsenal is to say, hey, we're kind of better than this fucking Looney Tune. Right. Like they kind of come out and they're just like, well, we're kind of like one, like a, like just kind of like, okay. So like, okay. So like, okay. So this is, this is fascism right here. Right. And let's like, we're, this is like low. This is very low. But, but we're like, we're, we like, we're like, kind, we're like, right. We're skimming it. We're skim, but we're not in it. And we're definitely not below, but we're like skimming the top of it a little. And so you should vote for us. That's the only thing the Democrats have. And so because this country kind of fucking had and still does in some cases has Trump derangement syndrome where they believe that everything bad in this country only existed when Trump showed up, when it was like, no, 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 Trump was a flashlight on all those things. Obama was the one putting the curtains, you know, we're, we're too busy talking about his fucking tan suit rather than the fact that he is also a war criminal with a kill chain. Right? That's, that's, I mean, what else do the Democrats have? They don't really have anything else. So then, so then they keep going, right? Then they keep, keep saying that she's unexperienced. And that's true. When it comes to being a corporate whore, she's very unexperienced. I don't I don't I don't think uh India Walton knows how to be a corporate whore, which which I think was the same excuse that people were using against Eugene Debs. They were like he is inexperienced in being a corporate prostitute. This is ridiculous. What we need in 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 office in Washington are more people that are willing to 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 do sexual and and economic favors for the corporate elites. And if they're not there, then what's the point of politics? That's how these people talk. And they're right. She's inexperienced in that. What she's experienced in is, uh, you know, being like a real human being. Uh, but that's but that's the world of politics, right? Like people that know how to be bought and sold and uh, either know how to be exploited or how to exploit others are are considered a value in politics. But if you are someone that has moral standing and moral character, you are seen as inexperienced or or too much of a dreamer or you don't belong in that realm, right? The people that run this country and this is and and it it boils all the way down to just regular people. Like regular people stand by this, right? Like regular people look at politicians with a moral backbone and they go, "Well, you know, they're not going to survive in this condition. They're not going to survive in this in in, in this climate." They're just not going to make it unless they're willing to play ball. So even the people that – and these are people that probably believe that they are morally righteous. But they want their government they're, – they're kind of okay with their government being morally corrupt and morally bankrupt. And say that anybody with moral righteousness isn't going to survive unless they play ball in corruption, in moral bankruptcy. You need fresh blood in there, man. Instead of these fucking dinosaurs sucking the blood out of the working class. And yeah, they're vampire dinosaurs. That's what happened. 
not all of them uh, went extinct. Some of them became Nancy Pelosi. They're all vampire dinosaurs. That's what. That's what. It, and in and in that case, yeah, India Walton doesn't have the experience. India Walton is not a vampire dinosaur. She's she's you know like a person. Here's something else they used against her. They said that someone lived with her uh, in 2018, and her roommate uh, lived with her in 2018. Sold drugs sometimes. Uh, okay, so. That's also kind of the way that they framed it was was a little uh, off, right? The the way the media was framing it was a little off. Because this person didn't live with her. That it, it was a friend that would be down and out and occasionally needed a couch to crash on for a little while. And yeah, in order to survive, that person sold drugs. And unfortunately, uh, they did it while they were uh, staying with India Walton. Right. Um, and that sucks. That sucks that that happened. Uh, the bigger question is, uh, why is this her fault? She's not the one that was like, hey, look, I'm bringing home drugs for you to sell. You know, she's a nurse. She's working a double. She's got 16 hours and then she comes home, probably makes a little bit of uh, a bite to eat. And then she goes back to sleep because the next day she's got to work a regular shift. She's not wondering what this guy's doing on her couch. The ultimate question that I think needs to be asked when this story gets brought up, and I don't think people do, uh, because for as progressive as people claim America to be, I think we're a rather conservative country. We're an incredibly conservative country. And when it comes to the way that we deal with um with compassion for for addiction and things of that sort, uh, and and really problems brought on by uh, by 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 economics, uh, you know we're we're pretty callous about this. Like people will look at this story about India Walton and her friend and use that as a way to 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 either be racist towards India Walton, um, or or just validate being like, well, see, they're they don't. How can you say that she has she's moral standing when drugs? Blah, 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 blah. You know, because when when you when you speak ill about dr drugs, instantly you get Nixon jowls. So that, uh, and that's the way that the war on drugs lives within uh, the heart of uh, conservative America. There. Uh, but the question is, what are the economic conditions that led somebody where their only way to survive was crashing on people's couches and selling drugs? I bet if you start looking into those answers, it would be the neoliberalism that was brought forth by the leadership of Byron Brown and his predecessors. Republican or Democrat, it doesn't matter because he's getting money from both sides. Right? The common enemy is an, an economic and political philosophy that centers around human beings being taken care of rather than human beings being tools for profit for other fucking human beings. I would wager to bet that the reason why India Walton's friend was down and out, needed a couch to crash on, and had to survive by selling drugs is because of the economic conditions that Byron Brown put into place in Buffalo. And why India Walton wanted to change that stuff. I don't know if she did this or not. I, I, I don't I don't believe that she did um, because there were some internal issues within the India Walton campaign that also were uh, part of the reason why I, you know, she 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 lost this past month um, is I would have made a statement to say that this is this is why she's running is so that nobody has to do this. We, we don't create economic conditions. We don't create a cultural um zeitgeist that chastises and pushes people aside and sends them into uh, a cycle of poverty where they need to to sell drugs or do drugs in order to just get through the day. Uh, 
this one's hilarious because they they're like, oh, but she used impolite language. Oh, impolite language, right? Why? Because she is recorded at a protest to say no justice, no peace. Fuck these racist police. Which uh, agreed, hundred percent, right? Yes, absolutely. Fuck these racist police. We don't fucking need them around. The Democratic establishment got fucking in. Oh my god, a political candidate using impolite like oh my. She what she said? She said the f word. You know the you know the word I'm talking about. The f, watch a Chris Rock special because he says it. A lot is that it's that word. It's the it's the F word. You just don't do that as as leadership. It's crazy. It's just children might be uh, motherfucking children probably know. Like I curse, and I bet you a fucking ten year old can teach me ten new curse words that I didn't even know existed that are far more creative. You're worried about kids. Kids are going to figure this shit out anyway. Impolite language. Are you kidding? What are you supposed to... Oh, am I supposed to be all polite after I see racial injustice and police brutality? Like, if I... After watching the video of George Floyd being murdered by Derek Chauvin, was I supposed to go, gee willikers, that was crazy. Oh, lollipops and candy canes. Oh, get... Get the Fraggle Rock out of here, huh? Would you just? That is just some bull honky. Well, I'm, I, no, we don't, nobody talks like cable television. Nobody talks like an R rated movie on cable television. And if they do, that, that person is probably mentally unstable and they need to seek help. Fucking A. Like, the, the, the entire Democratic establishment is filled with people who volunteer to be hall monitors in, in their middle schools. They were the ones that were just like, is that gum? Are you chewing gum, Mrs. Mrs. Kavlowski? Gum. Yeah, I caught him. That's the whole Democratic establishment, is that kid. That's what they want. Like, how can they claim to be fucking progressive... When they're when they're culturally still stuck in the early '90s, right? Like everybody is just Tipper Gore in the Democratic establishment. All of a sudden, fuck it. Who gives a shit? Put put a parental advisory label on India Walton campaign posters. Ooh, she said fuck every, that one time where it was very appropriate to say fuck because the cops are murdering people. I mean, I will give them that they're far more progressive than like the 1890s. Like the Democrats don't believe in using leeches. Good. Welcome to 1903, Democrats. You guys did it. Boy, can't wait till you get to 1910. Nobody tell them about the gas powered automobiles. Horse, horseless carriages. Why? I'd never like. That's 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 the progress the Democrats have is that they're they're at least it's not slavery like that's that's as progressive as Democrats really can get. Are you fucking kidding the fuck out of here? Goddamn hall monitors. So Brown, those those are primarily most of the reasons. Uh, and like I said, there was some internal politics as well. Um that were happening that that derailed some th some things for for the India Walton campaign. Now Brown was also backed by the real estate uh, real estate lobby in Bu in Buffalo, and this happens in municipal elections. I, I I think when it comes down to city level stuff, um, real estate companies and uh, like land developers and stuff do end up having a lot of say in politics because of Citizens United. They funnel their money behind a candidate that is going to kind of let them do whatever they want. If they feel like they want to gentrify a neighborhood by kicking out its current residents and um, putting in, you know, some fucking uh, bougie ass coffee place. When really what that neighborhood needs is a grocery store and a hospital. Those people are backing all the local Democrats because the local Democrats will let them do that. While the local Democrat says, no, I'm going to fight for your neighborhood, you know, and, and then they fucking don't. 
and then they fucking don't. The union leadership endorsed the write-in plan, campaign, write-in campaign. The union leadership did too. Remember when the DNC chastised Bernie supporters because they said they were going to start a write-in campaign for Bernie? Remember when they chastised Green Party supporters when they said they were going to start a write-in campaign for for Jill Stein? Yeah, interesting. Interesting. All of a sudden, the DNC establishment was very much on board with with a write-in campaign. Very much on board with wanting to support a a, a write-in candidate there. Interesting, isn't it? Just a little bit. Just a teensy, teeny, tiny little bit. Byron Byron Brown couldn't accept defeat that he had lost to the primaries to a socialist, which meant that a blue-collar city like Buffalo wants a leader that is going to be a socialist, that is going to, uh, you know, govern with the interests of people in mind rather than profit margins. Remember when Democrats made fun of Trump supporters because they couldn't accept that Trump had lost the election? Where are they at now? Why aren't they calling out the hypocrisy of their own party for doing the same thing that they've made fun of other people for? This, that, and, th- and, and this is me talking directly to d- Democratic voters, right? You are registered D on your, on your, on your fucking card. And you sit there and you make fun of Bernie supporters for wanting to write uh, start a write-in campaign. You make fun of Green Party supporters because they want to start a write-in campaign. What happened? Where's the chastising on Byron Brown? Selective outrage all of a sudden, right? Byron Brown's not accepting defeat. He's not being a grac- gracious loser. What happened? Where, where, where are you chastising him? Hey, man, you lost. Just let it go. Step down and walk away from it. Where's that? Where were the Buffalo Democrats in that? Why didn't the Buffalo Democrats come out and say, hey, this is not okay. You you lost, man. Plus, that woman, because the Democrats play identity politics as much as they do, India Walton is, is a black woman. That's two boxes. She's a nurse. That's a third box, essential worker, hero, right? Healthcare hero. And she was a union member, which is something the Democrats claim that they're on the side of is is unions. I mean, in terms of identity politics, she checks all the boxes. Why didn't the Democratic establishment just accept her when they check all the boxes for the identity? Because of what she believes in. That's where that's where this comes down to ideology. And that's where the, the Buffalo Democrats and Democrats all around have to realize that the Democratic Party, the party that they have aligned and, and been and, and identified with, is not really a party for the people. Uh, the, the mask is coming off, man. Like, there's not much you can say or do to convince me or anybody else that the Democratic Party is, is a party of good guys. They're just not. They're not even anti-heroes. They're, ju- they're just a- another bad guy. That's it. That's all they've ever been. Now, most average people don't pay attention to the details of this stuff, right? What most average people do, and and, and there's a reason for this, um, is they read the headline and then they move on, right? They go, oh, my goodness, this is terrible. India Walton's roommate used to sell drugs. Oh, probably to kids. You know, like that's how that's how they do it. Why? Well, because, one, uh, most of the working class is overworked. They don't really have time to to delve deeper and get educated. And uh, I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, they're stupid. I'm, I'm, I'm saying it's, it's, it's a lot of time and effort to look deep into social issues, to look deep into political candidates, learn about who they are, what they believe in, what they stand for, what they're going to push, how government works, how propaganda works, all of this stuff. I mean, that is an investment of time to learn. Right. That's that's why people like me exist. That's why people like uh, Lee Camp and Jimmy Dore and Graham Elwood and Kim Iverson, all these people that break stuff down. That's why they exist is because we break it down for you so that you can just listen to this and, and be like, oh, shit, that's crazy. 
right? And and, and that involves some level of trust, uh, which again, corporate media kind of convolutes. But that's what that's all people know. It's it's difficult to think critically when you're working three jobs and 85 hours in a week. And the only thing you want to do when you get home is watch some popcorn TV that isn't going to strike you on an emotional level or an intellectual level, right? We That's why Big Bang Theory is as popular as it is because a lot of these people are overworked and completely physically and mentally exhausted. So they're not going to sit down and go, let me dig deeper into India Walton. No, they're going to look at what what the Washington Post says. They're going to look at something like the Buffalo News, which was smearing India Walton, a neoliberal paper in Buffalo that was smearing India Walton. And, you know, they put stuff in the headline like, oh, she's going to be as bad as Trump. And people go, oh, yeah, I guess she might be. Critical thinking is is inhibited in this system, which is why electoral politics gets hijacked as quickly as it does. You know, is is when I mention that Bernie is a disappointment to people, they go, oh, but you're a socialist because that's who they know as a socialist. Right. But you got to ask yourself, does Bernie actually stand for the socialist principles and ideologies that I stand for? The answer to that question is no for me, obviously, but here, here's what I think we can do to kind of, because this is the danger in this, right? What, what we just kind of proved is the corporate hijacking of the electoral system. What we also proved is that there is no two-party system in this country. It's a one-party uh, corporate oligarchy. Is is you pick what color you want your corporate oligarchy to look like? Is it is it the blue colored one or the red colored one? That's what it is. I'm I'm sorry if that's kind of like breaking your world, but I mean that's the reality we have to understand, right? And. And if voting is as important as what people say it is, and it's already kind of been hijacked by corporations, Then, and you want to show how powerful voting really is, here's something we can organize, a vote strike. What would happen if every adult in this country looks at two candidates that's presented to them, right, and uh, and goes, I don't like either of these candidates. I don't like either of these candidates. So we're just not going to vote. A vote strike. Organize a vote strike. Organize to say if these elections are going to be stolen and controlled by corporations, then we're not going to vote. And we'll expose that's exactly what's going on. Because that's going to be the that's going to be the calculated play uh from from these people that control our elections is we have to kind of fake freedom, fake the fact that they have autonomy over this system, that it is a system that works for the people. But you can't go without leadership, and I think they will choose the side of controlling leadership and power that way. Uh, and you'll you'll probably see the establishment just pick their candidates anyway. Right, and campaigns can work, right? We, you know, they chastise the Bernie people, they chastise the Green Party people. I mean, right, and can, can, campaigns can work when they have equal visibility. When they're given the equal footing that these corporate fuckheads are given. If Bernie had started a write-in campaign. They would have buried it. The media would have run its propaganda. Similar to what they did with India Walton. They would have buried it. And again, because the working class is so stressed out. They're not really looking past the headline. At most, they'll read the byline and maybe the first two paragraphs. At most. But that's not where the information is. It's not where the truth comes out. The truth comes out in paragraph seven. When they say all of this is conjecture. But it doesn't matter because people have already believed it because people aren't reading because we've created a culture where they don't have time to read past the headline.
The reason Byron Brown won is because there was money and propaganda used against a candidate that would have legitimately helped the city of Buffalo. The reason Byron Brown won was that. And the reason why they went after India Walton is because uh, if India Walton won and she succeeded in Buffalo and, and helped those people, even the first year, things started looking like they were better. There will never be a Democratic candidate that would be elected in that city unless they ran on a socialist platform, which was my biggest concern, by the way, is that she's running within the Democratic Party. That was a definite concern that I had um, because socialists that run under the Democratic Party are always co-opted. So it made me a little concerned. I'll be I'll be very frank and honest about that. But look, man, if we're really going to change the system and and legitimately like give socialists a chance to run, what you know, in and and if you even believe in in the vaguest notion of freedom, in the vaguest notion of freedom, then you should be against what happened to India Walton. You should be against the third parties being erased from the electoral system. You should be against all that. If you even believe in the vaguest notion of freedom, you should be against all that. And what you should do is divest from the two-party system. Again, I've mentioned this before on this channel uh, a, few, a few months back, is if you are disillusioned by the Democratic Party and you don't want to, and you're not a Republican, figure out what you are and uh, d change your registration from Democrat to something else. A, a nationwide, we should be doing this. And we should be thinking about a vote strike. In in my in my in my opinion, I think if you really want to make uh, voting be as powerful as it is, I would I would use the tactic of labor organizing and striking to to make that point, to prove that point, to say that we're not we're not going to put up with the corporate hijacking of our uh, of our electoral system, especially when the electoral system is kind of touted as the only way that change can come and matter right that's kind of the way that it's touted so uh yeah i think this is a dangerous precedent that's been set um i think the precedent that's being set is even if socialists win the democratic establishment is going to partner with the other side of the coin and uh, the Republicans are going to get involved and they're going to use money and they're going to use lobbies and they're going to use propaganda and they're going to ensure that candidates that would actually help the people uh, and, and, and change the way that this system is running are, are not going to be in positions of power where they can actually drive to true change. And that's, that's the party that, you, that people want to prop up and protect. And, and and I think you shouldn't. That's the that's the whole show. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, you know the deal. Make sure you hit that like. Make sure you, you share this out. Make sure you are subscribed to wherever you're watching. Um, and as I mentioned at the top of the show, there are going to be certain, um, certain pieces of content that will be coming out in the future that will only be available on Rockfin and Odyssey because they're going to have some copyrighted stuff. Uh, and I'm going to make sure that you guys know who the property belongs to. I'm not like trying to use it as my own thing. I'm just going to be doing some um, dissections and comedy commentary type stuff on uh, on TV shows, albums, songs, and stuff like that. So uh, that'll be available only on Rockfin and Odyssey. So if you're uh, if you're watching this on YouTube and 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 audio as well, it'll be it'll also be available on on the audio platforms. Um, so if you're watching this on uh, you know YouTube or Facebook or something like that, uh, I would uh, head on over to Rockfin or Odyssey or, or find the audio version and subscribe to that. That's available wherever you listen to podcasts. Uh, you can make a donation. You can become a sustaining member, make monthly contributions to help this stuff uh, improve the quality uh, and in some cases the quantity of uh, content that I am producing as well. 
Uh, but, but right now I'm kind of focusing a little bit more on quality type stuff. Uh, so you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. Um, and, uh, I do have, uh, live shows coming up as well. And if you become a sustaining member, you get to attend, um, uh, for free to some of these live shows, in, in, which includes the virtual zoom shows as well. And if it's an in-person performance, obviously, uh, if you're a sustaining member, uh, that you'll get free tickets to shows when I'm in your city. Uh, so that, that'll, that'll be, that'll be kind of the deal. And which will be, which is, which is a, you know, I think it's a pretty cool deal. Uh, and you get a bunch of other cool stuff as well. Um, but I do, I do want to let you guys know about some of the, the live shows that are coming up. Uh, December 10th, I'm hosting a virtual show over Zoom for the Pittsburgh DSA. They are, um, they are starting a mutual aid project that requires some, some regular funding to make that work. Uh, that funding will, comes from, from you guys. Uh, and so I'm going to be hosting a, a comedy and music show. Uh, with Amy mm -hmm, uh, Zach Funk, uh, Lorenzo De Silvio, Stacy Florim, um, and uh, that's on December 10th. December 11th, I'm doing a virtual stand-up comedy show of my stand-up. Uh, I'm going to be doing the Citizen Revolution live for for you guys. Uh, so if you guys missed it on Black Friday for for whatever reason, um, that is the next date that's available. December 17th is a forkful of noodles recording. And December 18th, I am going to be uh, performing live in person in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So if you're in the Pittsburgh area, December 18th, come hang out with me at the Fun House at Mr. Smalls. Uh, tickets are available for that right now. All of this stuff is available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Um, all right. Yeah. Stay tuned for more videos like this. I'm going to be doing a live stream, uh, like once or twice a month. Uh, the next one, if you're watching this before this date, obviously the next one is this Friday, December 3rd, uh, 4 PM to 6 PM. So, uh, mark your calendar, set, set your alarm clocks, whatever you got to do. Uh, they, that tells you when these live streams are coming and I hope to see you guys there, but till then be good to each other, be good to yourselves and we'll see you on the road.